Cruising is a great way to have an affordable vacation, but a bit of planning in advance is the best way to save money and manage your cruise budget. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now these days, I think a lot of us are really trying to see how can we still have amazing vacations, but maybe just not blow our budget. Especially there are a lot of different cruise extras that certainly if we let ourselves go, well, our budget could just get out of control. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you the 10 things that you'll want to plan for in your cruise budget, as well as the tips and strategies and even a couple of new ones that I've never shared before that will help you to save money on your cruise. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. So the first thing that you'll wanna budget for is the cruise itself. And there are of course a lot of factors that are going to go into the price of the cruise. So firstly, it is the cruise line itself. What I suggest is that you book the cheapest cruise that you will still be happy with. Now, some ways to save money on your cruise and still go with your preferred cruise line is to look at the age of the cruise ship. If you can book on a cruise ship that's maybe a year or two years old rather than the newest cruise ship, you will automatically probably save at least 20%. The other place that you'll wanna to look to save money is on the cruise cabin. Now an interior cabin is usually going to be the least expensive. However, if you think you might want something a little bit better than an inside cabin, but you would be happy still with an inside cabin, consider booking your inside cabin and then bidding to upgrade that cabin later on. And reprice your cruise often. So you might have booked your cruise several months or maybe even a year in advance. Keep an eye on that price and if you do see that it has gone down, contact your travel agent or the cruise line and ask about that and they will often lower the price as long as you are before final payment. Now I do have another little advanced strategy that you can use as you get to final payment which I will share later on in this video. Number two, consider prepaying your gratuities. Now this is something that is optional, but if it helps you to kind of control your budget by prepaying your gratuities, that in itself can be helpful. Personally for me, I don't like to have a big bill at the end of my cruise, so I like to prepay my gratuities. But there is another benefit. Approximately once a year, sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little bit less, but cruise lines will often raise the price or the amount of their gratuities. Now at that point, if they do raise them and you haven't prepaid them, you will pay a higher amount when you do go on your cruise. So if you prepay them, you do have a little bit of a potential savings by doing this. Number three, flights or drive. So you have to figure out how are you going to get to your cruise. Now, if you need to, or if you want to fly, there are a few different options and you'll want to make sure that you budget for this. One of those ways is to take a look at Cruise Line Air. In some cases, Cruise Line Air is very competitively priced and they may even have a promotion. So that can be a little bit of a money saver. However, at the same time, you might also want to consider, can you drive? to the cruise port. If you really are trying to stay on a budget for your cruise, this can be a really good way, especially if you are a family that is cruising, a really good way to save money and have a fun family road trip. Now, don't forget if you are driving that there still is a cost to that. So make sure to budget that. So maybe you need gas, you might consider it might be 100 or $200 per way to get to the cruise port. If you need a hotel, you wanna make sure that you've looked into that as well. Number four, budget for the drink package or not. So of course the drink package is completely optional. Now, a lot of people really like having the drink package because not only can it be a money saver, drinks can be expensive on a cruise, but at the same time, it does add an extra convenience. And a lot of people say they like having that on their cruise. However, it is definitely not necessary. And something to do before you book the drink package is actually research what is included on your cruise. Most of the time there are some drinks included, coffee, tea, your basics, all of that is included. Water that is safe to drink is included on a cruise. So you don't actually need to book the drink package. Now, if you don't think that you'll drink the alcohol, but you would like to drink soda, this really is available at a pretty reasonable cost. Now I have a little tip about the drink package. If you're on a cruise line that does make you buy the drink package for two people in the cabin, but one person doesn't drink, 
don't feel stuck. What you can do is call the cruise line. If you explain that one person doesn't drink, most of the time they will allow you to buy the non-alcoholic package for the second passenger in the cabin, and that is going to save you money. Number five, make sure to budget for your shore excursions and research your cruise ports. So shore excursions is definitely one area that people can spend a lot of money. And a lot of the times this is just due to the fact that they really haven't done enough research about that cruise port. Either they end up getting to the cruise port, doing nothing, and not having the best day or they end up booking an expensive shore excursion once they're on the cruise ship and they get off the cruise ship and they realize they could have just taken a cab for five or ten dollars to the local beach and they would have been just as happy. Now something that I like when I do book my excursions with a cruise line is it does actually help me to kind of budget for my cruise because then I can pay for it in advance and still have the flexibility if I need to make a change or even cancel. I can usually do that. Most cruise lines, I think it's till two days or three days before the cruise. So you do have that flexibility, which is something good. Now what I do is I actually keep track of all of this. This is part of my ultimate cruise planner and I keep track of my deposit, my payment, just keep track of everything that just helps helps me to kind of keep control of my cruise budget, shore excursion, cruise line air, etc. And of course, miscellaneous things. So if I'm booking any other treatments, maybe spa packages or anything else, I can keep track of all of that on my cruise planner. And when there are different things that I wanna make sure that I have in my budget for later on once I'm on my cruise, I add that as well to my cruise budget planner. And I can even keep track of any of the different activities that I've booked on board, whether there's an additional cost or whether it's included. Now, all of the cruise budget forms are part of the Ultimate Cruise Planner. The Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that can help you to keep track and keep organized for your cruise from the time that you book your cruise all the way through embarkation and disembarkation with cruise planning forms, cruise budget forms, and more. If you are interested in the Ultimate Cruise Planner and seeing what's included, I'm gonna leave all of the information linked down below in the description of this video. Number six, plan and budget for any of the optional packages that you really wanna have on your cruise. So this could be the internet, this could be a photo package, this could be a thermal spa pass. So any of those things, just make sure that you are budgeting for them. Now, in particular, when it comes to the internet, if you are lucky, maybe you booked your cruise and you have the internet as a perk, or maybe have the internet, even if it's a basic package, this is going to be enough for you and you don't need to upgrade to a premium Wi-Fi package, or you might have a few minutes that are included with your cruise. Now, if you think you might wanna upgrade or you don't have internet, as part of a package when you booked your cruise, then just make sure that you keep an eye on your cruise planner. Most cruise lines now do have promotions leading up to the cruise for people who are booked on their cruise where you can get a discount 10, 20, even 30%. Now I have a little tip if you were thinking of getting the photo package. If you are cruising with extended family, have just one family or one cabin book that photo package. This way everybody can take the photos. One person will buy that unlimited digital photo package. And then when you get home, you could print out the photos as you need. Number seven, when it comes to packing for your cruise and planning for your cruise in terms of clothing and cruise items, don't buy all the items that you'll need for your cruise all at the same time right before your cruise. Try to plan in the few months leading up to your cruise so that you can buy a little bit at a time. Now, something that a lot of people do is they actually keep a little bit of a cruise wardrobe and they just keep that maybe in a spare closet or in a section of their closet. So what I mean is when you find a great little black dress, just keep that and wear that on every cruise for formal or elegant night. You have something to wear. Maybe you have dress shoes that you really like for those outfits. Just save those for the cruise and you don't have to buy them every time you go on a cruise. And when it comes to some of those useful cruise items, a lot of them can be given in advance as gifts. So snorkel gear makes a great gift, even luggage. What a great anniversary or Christmas gift that would be. Now I have two more things that you'll wanna plan for in your budget. And then I will share with you what you're definitely going to want to do before you make your final payment. And this is something new I've never shared before. So one other thing that you are going to want to make sure that you plan for in your budget are souvenirs. Now, not everybody buys souvenirs for anybody back home or even for themselves. But if you do think that you might wanna buy souvenirs, these can kind of add up. You might wanna do a little bit of research in advance and then just plan. If it's 10 to $20 per person, just put that into your cruise budget. Number nine, miscellaneous items that you are going to need cash for. So some of the things that you might 
need cash for. And this you definitely need to plan in advance because you have to take that out of the bank or the ATM machine. You don't really want to do this on the cruise ship because there is going to be a fee to do this. So bring it from home. That really is best or you may need to get a different currency. But things that you'll want to think about is paying for taxis when you're in cruise ports. You'll also want to maybe give a tip to any tour guide. So you'll want to have a few dollars for that. You want to tip the porter. Something that I like to do if I'm in cruise ports is if I'm buying something at a market is I do want to use cash. So maybe a $5, a $10, a $20 bill. Make sure you do have that cash with you. And as well, if you do think that you might want to tip any of the crew in cash, then make sure that you bring that cash with you. And a little tip is if you like to give cash to crew members, a lot of times it is something nice if you can write them a quick little note of thanks. So you might want to bring a few inexpensive thank you cards as well. Okay, so this last tip really has the potential to be a very big money saver and that will help you to stay on budget for your cruise. So first of all, you do want to make sure that when you make your final payment that you do check to see if the price has gone down. And this can be done very easily if you've booked directly with a cruise line. Just ask the person you're speaking with, just ask them to please check the price of your cruise. If the price has gone down, they'll automatically charge you with the lower price and the same thing if you are booked with a travel agent, ask them the same thing. But the other thing that you'll wanna do is if you booked a refundable fare, and oftentimes I like to book refundable fares, I don't really like non-refundable fares because they're not very flexible. But if you have booked a refundable fare, as you get closer to your final payment, so maybe a couple of weeks before, if you're pretty sure that you are going on that cruise, at that point, what you'll wanna do is call the cruise line or your travel agent, have them check what the non-refundable fare is. Oftentimes that non-refundable fare might be a good couple hundred dollars or more cheaper than your refundable fare. At that point, switch that price or that rate over to the non-refundable fare because you are so close to your final payment. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave all of the information about the Ultimate Cruise Planner, including the cruise budget forms linked down below in the description of this video in case you do wanna check that out. I would love to hear from you. What are the things that you make sure that you have as part of your cruise budget planning? And what are some of the tips that you use to save money for your cruise? Now, I'm gonna leave a video right after this one with the very best cruise items in case you do wanna check that out. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.